is going on everybody? Welcome back to Mount MoGraph Summit number 51, the VH1 award effect. It is exactly what you expect. It is that little glitchy, fancy urban hip. I don't even know any other words that describe it, but it is that effect they used for the VH1 awards either in 2012 or 2013. I really don't remember. It looks very intricate and fancy. However, it is the easiest thing you could ever do in After Effects. Maybe not the easiest. Actually, I'll take that back, but it is pretty dang easy. And hopefully one day you can go ahead and charge VH1 hundreds of thousands of dollars for the same effect. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and start this project in um, Illustrator here. And the reason reason I'm doing this is because creating a uh, text in After Effects doesn't give us the same functionality to split up the text into letters that Illustrator does, which is what makes this effect so easy. So I'm going to go ahead and just center up a square to kind of line up our text and create some text here. I'm actually going to go with VH1 uh, music and uh, maybe keep it a little bit shorter than my money artist, however fantastic that was. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and just pick a text that is not Myriad Pro. I'm going to go ahead with Proxima Nova, I guess, and go down and make it bold. And what we're going to do is just zoom in on our text. And if you've never used the ruler, it is helpful when you're trying to line up text um, very urban and hip. So I'm going to go ahead and just drag out a ruler from um, our little guide from our ruler side and uh, just line it up with the C of our music text or whatever text you ended up choosing. So it's nice and uh, hardly visible here with a nice teal. And I'm just going to go ahead and scale up VH1 until it almost lines up with the line. Uh, perfect. Uh, great. So that looks like, well, it looks like VH1 music. So that is what we wanted. I'm going to go ahead and into my type menu here and go down to create outlines just to cut this up into vector objects. And then from there, what I'm going to do is just shift command G to ungroup them and grab the VH1 and just kind of slide this dude down a little bit to make it uh, kind of stack. And then I'll delete this guide here as well. So once again, I will uh, grab these VH1 music effect and group these together. Let's go ahead and make this a white color just to stick out and maybe scale it up a little bit and drop this dude in the center of our square. So I'm going to go ahead and just align these nice and equal. But as you can see, this is already looking like some VH1 branding, partly because I used their name. So anyway, I'm going to do shift command G to ungroup these objects and go up into my layer panel and go down to release layers to sequence. So what's this, what uh, this is going to do I've talked about it in previous videos. It just splits up all the different objects into their own layers. And that is what is going to make this effect so easy. So uh, anyway, let's go ahead and just save this object or this uh, project as really anything you want. I'm going to call it VH1 something. And that is going to be good. So anyway, uh, another thing you might want for this uh, video or this little thing we're doing is this really nice footage this dude on Vimeo shot called Stefano Ronaldo. I'll link this in the video description and you can actually download this really cool um, uh, footage that he shot of New York with some cool lens and camera you know, full HD 1920 by 820, which is some weird resolution, but it looks cool. So we're going to roll with it. So I'm going to go ahead and open up After Effects. I've already downloaded that New York footage. Uh, so I'll import it and just drag it into a new composition. Perfect. So I'm going to go ahead and scrub through this and actually mute this audio because he put some real weird music behind it. But the footage looks really unique. Um, he shot it with some old camera lens with like some weird depth of field, like 0.95 or something. So there's some really cool footage in there uh, that I recommend checking out. So I'm going to go ahead and just set a marker um, for my work area with B and then another one for N and just trim this a little bit smaller because because we probably don't need three minutes of this footage. So I'll find a kind of interesting spot I like. Um, I don't know, really anything. This would probably look pretty cool. So let's go ahead and import our uh, Illustrator thing we made. So I got the VH1 something. I'm going to import it as a composition and retain layer sizes. Awesome. And as you can see, it's all split up. I'm going to go ahead and just copy these layers and paste them into my New York layer. And I might actually have to lift this up because it's in that weird 820 resolution. So as you can see, we're already starting to get a kind of cool effect. 
Um, so now what we're going to want to do is the trick of this whole um, effect is actually using a different kind of keyframe that I don't think I've talked about it before. And uh, this is actually called a hold keyframe. And so what a hold keyframe does, if I set a position um, keyframe and then go back in time and just set another one, um, we get an er interpolation between these two keyframes. As you can see, it slides over. So what you can do is you can right click these and go down to keyframe assistant um, or keyframe interpolation in your temporal interpolation and you want to set it to a hold keyframe. So for me, I'm going to go and just use my little motion script. You don't need it. Um, and if you just drag it down to zero, it'll set it to hold keyframe automatically. So what this does is now it's going to jump between those two states. And so this is what goes ahead and gives you that nice glitchy looking effect. So the first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and lock this New York layer just so we can't click it and can't mess up this beautiful footage this random dude shot. Um, that is, well, yeah. So anyway, let's go ahead and just start by also setting a uh, scale keyframe on all this stuff. I didn't bother naming the layers. It'll be pretty self-explanatory. So if I press S to bring up my scale, I'll just set another keyframe and you can uh, right click and go to your keyframe assistant and set a hold keyframe. Or if you have the motion script, just drag it down to zero and set a hold keyframe as well. So if I press U, we got all these wonderful hold keyframes and nothing's happening. So let's go ahead and make some stuff happen. So this bottom layer looks like it is the uh, black square behind our text. I'm going to go ahead and unclick our constrained proportion portions. And uh, the trick of this effect is, well, really nothing. All you do is you just randomly uh, move around these objects and the scale of objects. So you can set a keyframe, um, you can go back in time a little bit. And this is kind of fun because you can get really creative and you can kind of create like some abstract designs. And so I'm going to go ahead and just keep moving around here um, with no rhyme or reason. Um, kind of try to keep a nice abstract look or something. I don't know, keep some kind of format. Um, but it doesn't have to be anything in particular because that's what that's what makes it look so cool. Um, it's like very free form, very New York and very city esque, I guess. I don't know. I'm running out of words here today. Uh, so anyway, now when I play this back, you'll see that it's kind of going to jump around to all these different states and it kind of is starting to look interesting. So we'll just do a couple other quick uh, little keyframes here and, and then just drag it off the frame at any point and that just means it's always going to be off the frame. So as you can see, it's going to jump around the screen um, very weird and, and go through all these different little like sizes and scales and kind of look um, fun and cool, I guess. Maybe I'll make this. Um, yeah, so you can just hold shift to scale up proportionally if you want. Um, and you can also start throwing in some rotation um, if you are feeling crazy and you want to do that. But it's totally not necessary. Um, but rotation obviously would just add uh, more intricate stuff to your animation. So let's go ahead and lock this back layer. So now we can only click the top text layers. So as you can see, we're going back in time and we got this. Oh, well, now this little block is just too small. So let me go ahead and scale this up. Uh, a little bit and there we go. So now we have this block jumping around once again. Looks so cool. So I'm going to go ahead and lock that layer and we're going to go ahead and just mess around with the V layer. So as you can see, um, we'll go back in time and you want to make sure all these keyframes don't line up perfectly for the different elements. So I'm going to move a V here. Uh, I might move one down. Uh, maybe it's time to scale it up a little bit. Uh, maybe here I'll scale it down and this is where you can kind of just start creating like abstract designs so I'll try to go through this quick because I'm sure you guys uh, get the idea essentially but uh, yeah you just want to kind of have fun with this it is a fun effect um, but it's really not worth the hundreds of thousands of dollars that I'm guessing VH1 paid uh, so that is obviously great um, we're going to go ahead and maybe even scale this up unproportionally and just start to get some kind of abstract looking stuff um, that is, once again, very New York-y. So now when I play this, we have all this stuff jumping around. Uh, it doesn't look that cool yet, but I promise once we start uh, getting these other letters going, we'll start to get some interesting looks. So I have this H. Maybe I'll grab the H and the I together and uh, maybe move these over for a second. Uh, maybe move these. Uh, here we go. I'll grab these texts. What the heck is going on here? All right, so I'll move these over again and maybe move these up together. So now it's like saying hi or something. I don't know what's going on with those guys, uh, but we'll set a scale keyframe on those and then maybe we'll start animating those a little bit separately. So maybe the H will come over here and scale up a little bit, uh, scale back 
over here. <laughs> There's really not too much to talk about right um, right now in this very moment because this is very just like free form. Um, it kind of gives you a chance to uh, kind of do whatever you want with uh, your animation and have a lot of fun with it. So as you can see, when I scaled this up, even though it's in full resolution, we're having this weird aliasing thing happen on the side of our um, letters. So one of the things is when you have a vector object, you can actually select all your vector objects. So I'm going to unlock them for a second and click this little gear icon uh, right here and that's going to continually rasterize our layer so as you can see the blur is uh, now fixed so that's going to keep it nice and crisp so I recommend using that as well so let's go ahead and just keep rocking this out here um, and we'll see what we get I might not end up animating all of it super interesting uh, just to, for the sake of time and boredom uh, maybe drag that off here. So yeah, I'll do smaller little segments and and hopefully that gives you guys you guys uh, a good uh, idea of what you can do with this. So anyway, I'll keep going and I promise there is actually more to this video than just uh, dragging around some letters, um, but that's going to happen in just a second. So those hold keyframes are really fun to mess around with. You can kind of get a stop motion animation um, look going and that is super fun. So play around with that. We'll actually be using that on um, effects as well and that's how you can use like the invert effect to go black to white and like the whole lightning effect um, which I used I think in the example which we will use um, in just a little bit so I'm gonna keep moving this stuff around uh, there we go cool the M is moving around and let's see how this is looking lots of random stuff is happening maybe I'm gonna just grab this uh, these last couple layers here and kind of animate them together Maybe go this way. Okay, that was a bad choice. Um, move it over here. Uh, maybe go back in time a little bit. Move the S up, the U down. Maybe scale it. I don't even know. Uh, but that's what I'm saying is like this, this doesn't really feel like I'm doing very much. It doesn't really feel like I'm designing anything. But I guess in a way it's very like free form and I guess that's still technically designed. But uh, yeah, that's why I thought it was so funny when I first saw the graphic. I was like, you've got to be kidding me. You know, like, what is this all about? Uh, and I have no idea. It looked cool. So I guess I got to give it to them for that reason. But I don't know about the whole price they paid for it. It looks ridiculous. So uh, yes, yeah, grab that off to the side. What elements didn't come off? Looks like that one and this one. And let's see, I'll grab these bottom uh, couple layers because we ended up actually making our little segment a little bit shorter so we'll just grab these layers if you grab all your layers and hold um, alt you can actually just uh, squish them down to fit a different like uh, amount of time so as you can see we now have wow some crazy glitchy stuff I might actually grab all these it moves so fast and hold alt and just drag these out and make it a little bit slower so we can really see the glitch so as you can see it's kind of a mess uh, right in here I got this this I thing or this C, I might actually scale down a ton and move over here just because it was in the way. And this I is just no good. It's just massive. So let's see how this is looking. Uh, so this is uh, obviously what I was saying is you can do a lot more with it than what I, I'm going to go through for this video. And uh, just try to get it looking cool and interesting. And this is just the first step. So what we're going to do is do... Uh, shift uh, option command I or shift option command Y sorry I can't even remember I went on vacation here so uh, and if you grab all these layers here and just uh, parent them to this null we'll be able to just scale them down and change the position as well so I'm gonna also set a keyframe for position press U to see these two uh, null objects or this uh, null keyframes I don't even know what I'm saying oh my gosh so anyway, we'll go back in time a little bit and maybe move this over. And as you can see, they're all parented so we can get a kind of fun effect. We'll grab these keyframes and just set them to hold keyframes again, just like that. And now that's going to globally change all of our objects together. And if I go ahead and just copy those and maybe paste them back here, we're going to get a nice little uh, pop around of motion, kind of like a secondary motion that looks kind of fun. And I might even throw another one of those at the end. So it kind of pops around uh, and looks kind of fun and interesting. So there we go. VH1 is popping around on the screen. Let's grab all these layers, including the null object, and do Shift Command C. And let's call this base text. And so this is where the effect starts to look kind of cool. If we do Shift Command N to create a new mask, um, and then just select the top of our mask, we're going to drag it down to kind of cut out this first portion of the 
VH1 text. So uh, and make sure you don't grab the New York layer behind it. So if I duplicate this base text layer and press M for our mask path, I'm just going to move it up a little bit and uh, kind of add on to it and then uh, duplicate it again and do the same thing. So this is uh, very repetitive, but I promise it's going to look cool. So we'll maybe make this one a little bit bigger and kind of, if I can grab this uh, little window here, maybe go halfway through the text, duplicate this layer, press M, move it up, and maybe have it cut halfway through the VH1, duplicate this layer, and grab the mask path one more time here. And let's make this one nice and thin, uh, just for a kind of different look. We'll duplicate this layer, press M, and let's see, maybe put this right there, and let's duplicate it one more time for good measure, and we will actually just uh, fill in the rest of our VH1. So that's actually a huge amount of uh, black spots. And then all we have to do now is just randomly drag over our different layers with the masks. Um, really, anytime you want, you can go backwards in time a little bit. So now when we play it, we're gonna start to get this weird kind of uh, cutout of our objects and that's how we get uh, kind of like a tape delay or some kind of interesting effect that VH1 seems to love. So as you can see it's starting to look pretty complex. Let's go ahead and uh, once again continually rasterize all these layers just for good measure and let's make it even more intricate by creating one more null right in the middle and parenting all of our base text layers to this null and we'll once again press P and hold shift and press S to also bring up our scale property set a keyframe and uh, let's go ahead and just drag these back in time to when our animation is just about stopped so maybe about here and we'll uh, set these to hold keyframes you can also once again right click and go down to keyframe interpolation and temporal interpolation and set it to a uh, hold keyframe so I'll go back in time and maybe move this over a little bit and scale it up for a second and maybe I'll go back in time and go this way a little bit and scale it down and then what you do is you just copy this little random null and you just start pasting it around pretty much randomly and so now when I play this animation it's gonna start to look just crazy complex like we just did thousands of keyframes and really knew what we were doing but in all honesty I had no idea what I was doing I literally just was talking and playing around and you can just keep pasting these little things if you ever need a little bit more excitement wow that is exciting so let's once again grab all of these objects, including the null, but not the New York uh, footage in the background. Shift Command C to pre-compose them, and let's call this um, effect layer. And so this is where we're going to kind of get that lightning burst effect. And we're just going to go ahead and grab an invert uh, channel effect and drop it onto this layer. And there we go. We got a nice black and white switch. Let's go ahead and set a keyframe on our blend with original and press U to see what's going on. So once it comes on, uh, we're going to go and just go back in time. Let's go ahead and set a hold keyframe by dragging uh, the motion script down to zero or right clicking and once again going to your keyframe assistant. And then we'll drag this up to 100. And so now it's going to, as soon as it hits, change colors. So what you can do is just go crazy with this and really do whatever you want. Um, just go through randomly like this. Uh, do whatever you want, like I just said, and I keep repeating myself, but paste this um, and just kind of have fun. Um, and so for here, I'll do some real fast switches. So just go back and forth between those two, copy um, these layers, and let's see uh, what we have here. So I have no idea. I'm going to go ahead and play this, and we're starting to get just some crazy animation happening, but it does look kind of cool. So that is how you can create the VH1 award effect. And if you really want to all the way get the VH1 award effect, which I'm guessing some people might, you go ahead and you grab a black and white uh, effect and you drop it onto your New York footage uh, and make it all nice and contrasty. So we got the black and white footage. Let's grab a curves effect and drop a curves onto this as well and just knock down uh, the contrast. So we get some real stark colors and it are 
little logo award effect just really sticks out over the top of everything. I'll scroll forward in time and just set a marker and let's go ahead and check out our sweet VH1 award effect uh, that looks totally nuts and will probably give people seizures if you do it like how I did. Um, but it looks pretty complex and it was kind of fun to do. Anyway, this was Matt from Mount MoGraph. I hope you guys had fun with Summit 51 and uh, yeah, check out the video descriptions if you do want to download that New York footage and I will catch you all in Summit 52. Peace out.